I'm Dr. T and welcome to my dining room table. So today I'm going to be working a problem that's a classic titration problem. So a titration is an analytical technique that we'll quite often use. Uh, it's one of those that seems very primitive, partially because it slightly is, but it's also very helpful. In this technique, what we're going to end up doing, and I'll use kind of the notes off the side, we'll have a long, thin tube that's graduated very precisely, and then has what we call a stopcock, which is basically just an on-off switch. Uh, it's a drum with a hole in it, and when the hole lines up with the rest of the tube, liquid flows. When it doesn't, it doesn't. And of course, you can, you know, start inching it up there. So it's not just on off. You can also get you a know, little bit of flow, that kind of stuff. Okay, this is going to drop uh, the liquid inside here. The liquid here is called the titrant. And you're going to have a flask. Typically, this is an Erlenmeyer. Well, that's hideous. But anyway, it's an Erlenmeyer. And in here, you're going to have another chemical. So this is going to have the titrant. This is going to have your analyte, which is the chemical you're trying to study. And you'll know the volumes precisely. And what you're looking at is for some kind of indication that a reaction has taken place and that you're at a stoichiometric ratio, meaning that the amount of reactant from here is going to equal the amount of reactant that's in there. And thus, as long as you know one of those two, you know the other one. So in this case, uh, what we're looking at is we're titrating to the end point by phenol thiamine. So that's one of those kind of um, wordy phrases that technically have to be there. Uh, this is telling me that I'm going to the endpoint, so I'm not just slapping any old amount. When I'm in that endpoint, that's what we call that stoichiometric ratio, where the amount of titrant equals, or I should say, the amount of titrant is enough to react with all of the analyte completely with no excess in either case. That's what's meant by endpoint. And an indicated, this is how do I know it is, I'm using a chemical called phenolphthalein. Uh, this is peptobismol pink. Literally, in the old days, that's why peptobismol was pink. Uh, this turns pink in alkaline solutions and is colorless in acidic solutions. It, it'll get a couple other colors if you make the pH really extreme, but, you know, we're not. Okay, so in this case, in here, uh, typically you put the acid in the flask. It's easier to see the phenolphthalein if you do that. Uh, so we have 25.00 milliliters uh, sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. Um, it doesn't say concentration, so odds are... That's what we want to find out. Okay. Uh, and then we are titrating this with 39.58 milliliters of 0.123 molar, what do we got? NaOH. Very popular. You put the base on top uh, and then the base reacts with the acid. Okay. So uh, what is the concentration of sulfuric acid? Okay. So yeah, that is what we're looking for. Uh, what we want to do is we want to set up and we got to get to moles and we're going to need a chemical equation. So let's do a chemical equation. It's going to be neutralization reaction, H2SO4, that's an O, uh, plus NaOH yields Na2SO4, that's my salt, and then a water because we've got Arrhenius acids and bases. That's an H. Okay, uh, balancing, I've got two H's, two H's, that looks good. One sodium, two sodium, no. Uh, okay, now, I didn't count that H. Uh, so now I have four hydrogens. So I put, two, wow, that looks hideous. Um, so I've got four hydrogens and four hydrogens. One, two, three, four. A sulfate, and when you're balancing, you can just balance polyatomic ions as a whole. You don't have to balance them individually. Um, so yeah, that looks good. Oh yeah, one oxygen that's not part of sulfate. Sorry, two of them. Two times one is two, and then two times one is two. Okay, wow, that is not a hydrogen I'd like. Okay, so there's my balanced chemical equation, and I'm going to need these two guys, the, the invisible one and the two over here. So this is going to be good old dimensional analysis. I'm going to grab my straight edge, and I'm going to start out with what I know, and I know this guy. So I know that this is 0, 0.0... 3958 liters NaOH aqueous. And I could put aqueous signs in all of these guys, but I'm not going to. Okay, now the reason I did that switch is because my next one I'm going to use the molarity. So this is telling me this is 0 0.123 moles NaOH for every one liter NaOH aqueous. Now, because I switched to liters, these liters cancel. 
I'm going to have to cancel those out one way or another, so I might as well just switch right off the bat. Okay, now I'm going to look at my ratio because I've got sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. What you want by what you got. What I got, sodium hydroxide. So that's two moles NaOH for every one mole H2SO4. Okay, I'm going to extend out my line a little bit longer because I didn't make it long enough. And now, uh, moles NaOH have canceled, liters of NaOH aqueous have canceled. So next up, what I want is moles per liter, but you'll notice there's a distinct lack of liters coming out because that would be my concentration. Uh, I, technically, I could use any unit. Once again, I left this vague. Molarity is going to be the easiest one to do. Okay, so I'm going to draw a box. I'm just going to leave this blank, or I could put the number one up here. No units. Nothing's going here because I'm adding a fact. And it's going to be just like this guy, except for the fact it's going in the denominator. It's not going in the front. But mathematically, it's going to be the same. Uh, so in this case, I know that this is 0 0.02500 liters of H2SO4 aqueous. So now, that doesn't cancel with anything because I'm adding a fact. And then what I get will be moles over liters, and that's exactly what I want. So I grab this guy. I take 0 0.03958, I divide that, no I don't divide that, I multiply that by 0.123, I divide that by 2, I divide that by 0 0.025, and that gives me, I'm kind of out of room there, so I'm going to go down here, uh, 0 0.09736, Da, 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 molar sig figs wise i've got four ooh, I, I i need more sig figs i'm not done yet six eight da, 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 molar okay titrations you get a lot of sig figs uh this is one where if you're doing these in a lab and you don't do the estimated digit that guy's always the estimated digit i always take off points uh at least i usually do uh because this is good data okay so let's round this over this is going to be 0 0.09737 well it's looking three uh, molar because that that's the good number so it's going to round up uh, h2so4 uh, now honestly I can change this if I want uh, what I could say is that this is let's see one two three I could call this 97.37 millimolar h2so4 if I would like as well uh, once you're going, you know, smaller than your decimal point, you know, once you're going to less than one category, hey, you might want to switch your um, uh, prefix. And you can put a prefix in front of molar all you'd like. And so I can make millimolar, same as I would have um, millimeters or milliliters. So it works fine, too. Okay, so, yeah, um, either one of those two would be my answer. Uh, this is completely superfluous. You do not need to do that, but uh, it does make it look nice. Uh, so with that said, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in later videos.